Hello there. Back with PrintShift. This week we're going to be designing a mount for the Orbiter Extruder. This is a fairly nice extruder. One of the new, it is a dual drive gear system. It has much larger drive gears than the Bontech, so you should be able to get a good bit more force on the filament. Let's pop this guy open. The reason they call it the Orbiter is because it's using a planetary gear system. That's also a clever name. Good job. I'll post the link to where I got this guy. The claim to fame is the very lightweight stepper motor. This is very light, so we're going to be using this as a direct drive extruder for the normally Bowden Mini. And you can see here that gear on the motor is directly engaging with these three gears. So, the gears down, and this is the drive gear. Focus. Yes. So you can see the drive gear is much larger, and it still has dual drive gears, the other, of course, on the idler. One thing I'm not as impressed with about it is the filament path. The filament is going in here, and there's quite a large gap where I can actually insert my tool around the drive gear. I'll get a still image, point that out. So I'm a little worried about this guy using flexible filament that it has a place for it to bunch up inside. It's always a little hard to get a full idea of the filament path because it's so restricted. Anyways, I was going to bodge over into Fusion and see if I can design a part that would fit the Mini without too much modification. Always a bit of an issue designing for the Mini because it is really engineered to within an inch, to within a millimeter. I'm sorry, this is Fusion 360. So if we were to move this guy, if we were to bump out the fan and the spacer, they actually don't have enough room to go any farther over the bed because they'll run into the idler. So what I've done is I've already removed parts in here, and I've even imported the orbiter mount. That is basically where we're going to stick it. You'll notice we have the fan spacer here. It's going to run into that, and one of the mounting holes will run into the fan. Since the fan is bodged right onto the um, Pinda probe, and the probe offset is well set and really working quite well, I'm thinking about leaving that in place and just simply remaking this part to engage with the center and have something to hold on to the other side of the uh, orbiter. We do need to lift the orbiter slightly. So this is two millimeters above the heatsink to account for this gap. I thought about just filing down the edge of the plastic there, but I'd rather just, you need a little meat underneath there to get to this mounting point, especially if we're gonna use that as our only mounting point. This part's gonna print with this face on the bed. I think I put a little bumps in there to guide around the part. And sort of work out easier to design when I have the physical parts in hand. So the first print probably not going to work perfectly, but should work reasonably well. So this orbiter has a four millimeter hole. We're going to use the PTFE tube in there. And basically the interface here is already a PTFE tube going down to the hot end. So we just need to get that length correct. And it should be good to go. Yep, testing this out. Right, what do we need to do to this part to make it work? I'm going to try to reprint this part, and do got a little figuring on my feet. I haven't quite gotten this all worked out. So that's actually a little bit proud already. I didn't realize that was sticking up above the extruder. Okay. Let's lift it in millimeters. Let's lift this another millimeter, and that'll be our flat face. So that gets this one screw hole into the mount. And then I'm going to put some tabs over here to keep that aligned on this side. I don't know if there's room to put in. I'm not seeing any good ways to secure this in place well. I was thinking about doing a little clamp over the top here, but this is where the idler goes. So there is no room for that even. I'm going to bump that up just a smidge, and then we'll do these. I like to hit things with an isolate. That's what it's going to look like.
Welcome back. I have installed the extruder after printing the part. I uh, neglected to hit the record button, but we are in there. It's held on with a single screw here and a zip tie across this side. A little temporary, but the filament path is pretty good. Can't quite open this guy up all the way to see inside. Really happy with the placement and the security despite being a zip tie mount. It's never ideal. I should probably tighten my screws before I tell people it's done. This is the new bracket, replacing the original, which is slightly different from the one in the computer model. I gotta go there. I did not have a place to put the uh, cables, so I'm just going to sort of zip tie them on there. A little temporary, that's okay. Next up, we gotta wire up the motor. I'm spending a lot of time thinking when this turns to the right. So if we're going clockwise here, we're retracting. Clockwise here, we're also retracting. So we should be able to just plug this in and have her go. I'm not sure that this is the extruder that's gonna stay on here. I was extremely impressed with the bomb tech that we installed last week. So I'm going to do a little more temporary job than usual. Let's see, this guy would go in like so. This is the wrong connector, 4-pin Panasonic. Oh, dude. This is the same connector. It's just this is the locking version versus straight-up version. Alrighty. I'm going to cut that there and save this piece so you know the order. Wires on this motor are a little on the cheap side, too. I don't know if they're solid core or not, but they're very thin. So, first thing we're gonna do is actually test the extruder, and make sure it's spinning the correct direction. We're gonna test, we got a preheat, so it's gonna be a minute or two, but you know, don't worry about it, we'll fast forward. I'm gonna draw a mark on this guy. What I like to do with all my motors is just draw a line on it. Make it easy to see if it's spinning. It's kind of mildly annoying because we're staring at the rear, but heck, you know what? We can mark this side too. So it's easy to see if the motor's spinning from the front of the machine. Goodness. Who's running the show? Actually, while we're waiting, I'm going to make some uh, zip ties on this guy. So I'm just going to Velcro tie this to the outside, so I'm not sure this is going to last. Big fan of the reuse reusable zip ties and Velcro ties, because, well, I hate to throw stuff away. Now I remember why I was actually using the zip ties. We also need to insert a bottom tube, so we might as well have that guided by the same... Uh, we don't want the filament getting all wrapped up in our business. Good enough to test our direction. So we are spinning this direction. It means we are feeding. So it looks like we are going everything correctly. Now we have not figured out the steps per millimeter for this motor yet. For this extruder, I should say. But nevertheless, I think it's about a 4 to 1. I have to look up the uh, settings and we'll calculate that out. Well, it's going to have the same uh, same start G-code of setting the steps per millimeter at the beginning of a file as the bottom deck. No big deal. Get that out of the way so we can use our... It's going to call for a real zip tie. Check that you still have full range of motion. So we are clearing everything just enough. Good to start testing and start extruding. Don't want to use the Pusa's load filament features. We are preheated to 195, so feed in some PLA. Now, will it extrude? I think so. It really seems to be going well. Part of this is we had to replace the PTFE tube inside here. So the tube runs from the nozzle up into the up orbit. And there we go. I'm getting some good extrude. I'm gonna put a bunch of filament through here just to Make sure it's not a fluke. And now what I'm going to do is run over to the computer. I'll tie up the wires. And we'll get a print started for you. Keep a close eye on the extruder. It's starting to lift up a bit. That's 10 kilograms of force being generated by the orbiter. Oh, there, claim I did not measure it. But that mount is insufficient. It's 
So without a really good seal on that Bowden tube, get back up. This is out the nozzle where it should be extruding. This is a big problem. Came out cleanly though, which is why I was testing with PLA.